Hey, good morning everyone. Welcome back to Blue Ridge Silverhound. And this is probably the video that, um, believe it or not, that you, at first glance, you may not need, but could come in handy. It's especially if you're into the whole buy-sell trade of coins, collectibles, that sort of thing. So we're going to focus on coins, obviously, because that's the main competency of this channel. And then more than likely, you're a coin person as well. Uh, just trying to make it happen. Okay, so uh, some of the biggest mistakes that I guess new buyers and sellers of coins make is under or overestimating shipping. All right, shipping is always a big deal when it comes to the sale of coins because you could sell coins that are two, three, four, five bucks, or there are coins that could be above, I would say, like the $10 threshold up into the hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. But trying to figure out, man, what's the best way to package up, not only package up the coins, but kind of like rate quoting it out so it's accurate for the people that are looking at your auction. Okay, so there's a few things you have to keep in mind when you are engaging in this activity of buying and selling, especially on like forum sites like eBay or Facebook groups, okay, and then you receive the funds like in your PayPal or a Venmo transaction if you really know that person. But PayPal, you know, generally for people to kind of like cover their behind, they will go ahead and send you a uh, send you cash in the form of a goods and services, okay. So charge the fees. That's more money. That's gonna come off of your bottom line. Um, and then, you know, you could go and ship it from PayPal directly. But there is a problem with shipping directly from PayPal. And I'm going to highlight that here in a moment. But, um, okay, we have a few coins that we are going to send out. Uh, I threw on a couple coins on eBay. And believe it or not, I sold two out of the three. Uh, for those of you that have been keeping track of some of the, some of the, like the, the RPMs and stuff that I've been coming across in... Um, in my sales, okay, and not, not only my sales, but my searching of these wheat scent bags, uh, we are, um, yeah, the, we, we have sold a couple of them. The good news is two of them went to one buyer. The one coin I did not sell, I'm going to end up giving to that same buyer as well, all right? I, I'm not trivial in that way, you know. Um, you know, it's like an extra added bonus. I feel like these coins went above and beyond on the secondary market. So thank you to the gentleman that purchased both coins. So where do we go from here? Well, obviously packaging the coins is going to be the first step. Now you have a couple different ways of packaging these coins up and keeping in mind the bottom line. We wanna make sure that we're not spending too much money in the actual materials aspect of it, but we have a couple different methods of packaging these up, okay? And then it'll really depend on your accessibility to these items and affordability. Number one is going to be something like this, okay? This is a plain two by two cardboard um, holder, okay? This is penny size. Usually you wanna use the size of holder that is uh, made for the size of coin, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and package up just any old penny that I have here as a um, example. Okay, so this is this is great, but you have to staple these. Okay, I'm gonna tell you and show you the pitfalls of using something like this because this is dirt cheap, bottom of the barrel. These things cost about a penny, uh, and they are sold generally in, in packs of a hundred, uh, or you could buy full boxes of them. Okay, your other option are these guys here. These are also two by two mylar PVC free. Um, holders okay so the coin slip inside right here and I'll actually take a coin here just any old coin I had shipped out those coins by the way to that gentleman already but the coin slip in there okay it's nice and safe it's pliable there's no PVC so you don't have to worry about corrosion and then you have a secondary sleeve on the back side there where you could put in like a little insert with some um, coin information but you just fold it it's nice, it's rigid, well it's not too rigid, but it's pliable enough that, um, that it'll protect the coin throughout its travels. So we have that, let me go ahead and grab the 
I came unprepared and I hadn't brought out a stapler or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, my apologies. All right, so another important tool in your tool chest should be a flat cinch stapler. We wanna we want make sure, see, like so. So we put the coin in, we center it just right, we fold it over, and if you hold it like so, okay, it'll hold the coin for as long as you need till you get all of the staples in. So what I like to do is I like to do four corners. All right, so if you do four corners, it'll hold the coin in perfectly. So on the back, the staples sit up a little bit, okay? We wanna be able to flatten those out. So I have a set of either pliers or something that'll flatten that out for you. And if you were gonna put these into your box, you would do the same thing as well because you don't want these to scratch up against each other, each other and possibly damage your coin. So we got our two different methods, okay? And then we're going to ship both of them together. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. But before we go ahead and do that, let's explore a couple of different options for the shipping part of it. This is the part that you guys are waiting for. So we have the number 10, envelope or this one is actually a little bit shorter the 10 is a little bit longer i like the shorter ones for one two coin lots and then we have the good old standard bubble mailer all right so for this particular video we're going to focus on one or two coins rel relatively inexpensive uh somewhere between like that one dollar to fifty dollar range uh, what's the best method of sending these out all the while keeping more money in your pocket because you're not overspending. All right, so usually I would use something like this um, in the event that the coin sells and it's under $10 for one coin or two coins or three coins put together that equals less than $10. Um, and usually with that, I would mate it up with a first class stamp, just one stamp, okay? So it's like what, 46, 48 cents or whatever, however much the cost of one stamp would be that would go onto that envelope keeping in mind okay if you have a digital scale a postage scale you gotta make sure that your your piece of mail is going away less than an ounce or else it'll get kicked back to you for more postage okay you don't want to do that it's just wasteful time and energy and money all right now you could do the forever stamp option with this keeping in mind that for the first ounce, you, you get one stamp, okay? If you're sending out like two ounces, it's gonna be three forever stamps on there, okay? So the, the price goes up. Uh, you're gonna be looking at a buck 50 worth and then the cost of the bubble mailer is gonna be however much you spend it. I bought uh, I buy these in bulk uh, of um, boxes of 500 of them because I know I go through them really quick uh, just based off of my secondary sales. So um, with that being said, these right here, I end up picking for like two, three cents a piece. All right. That's going to be the best way to buy these. If you go to say like a Target or Walmart to buy these singularly, they're like 79 cents. They're a dollar nine. Um, you could go to a dollar store. Okay. You could buy a two pack for a dollar. Um, you know, you got to weigh the individual cost per item. I save so much money and I keep so much more money in my pocket when I buy a big bulk. But you also have to keep in mind that you have to go through it for it to make sense. Uh, so, you know, for that big box, I paid like 25 bucks for 500 of them. So you could see just kind of like the evaluation of cost associated with that. If you went to Walmart and Oh, sorry about that. If you went to Walmart, you could actually buy a 10 pack of this. It's like five, six bucks. Um, I mean, it seems seems nice because you're buying a bulk pack of it, but you got to weigh the individual costs per each. All right. And you'll come to find out you're like, man, I'm losing money hand over fist because of something like that. So you could use the traditional forever stamp option with the bubble mailer. However, what I like to do, and uh, this is where PayPal is going to come into the equation. You could process your shipment right on PayPal, all right? And when you do that, however, okay, you're stuck with a certain rate kind of like table. Um, usually the packages will cost at the very least $2.80, which seems quite high, but it also 
adds in free tracking, all right, which in some cases on items that are over $10, this will make sense. Uh, you want to be able to have that tracking number and that tracking number will be um, uh, uh, placed into the eBay listing once it's sold, okay? So once you process it through PayPal and you get a tracking number, it'll automatically send that information to eBay. Uh, so you could do that. Another another option, okay, if you wanted to send something out like this and it's going to be like under three ounces, stamps.com. You could send out a tracked first class envelope for about $1.80. Okay, so that's going to be your secondary option. The only thing is you're going to have to hand type in the tracking number into the eBay sale once you get it processed. So there is kind of like your three different main, I guess, shipping options when it comes to things like this. So wait right here one moment. Let me grab something uh, because I forgot again. All right, sorry about that, guys. So I have a couple sheets of paper here. This is going to be my hypothetical invoices. Uh, you know, I guess packing slips I've printed off of PayPal. And also, you got to love the dollar store. Three by five index cards are going to be huge for this packing experiment. Okay, I would highly advise that you would invest in a pack if you're going to get into low dollar coin sales, okay, you're going to see here in a second. So we have a couple coins that we've packaged up, okay, they are going to, ones that, let's, for argument's sake, we're going to package one up here and then one in here just to see what it would look like and how I do it, okay, because I've been, success. my success rate is about 99.8%, all right. The problem with sending this coin out here is that someone can always file a claim that they didn't receive it. There's no tracking number if you send it with just a first class forever stamp. So that's the risk you're gonna have to take. But I've had probably one out of 100 people to actually file a claim to say that they didn't receive anything. And that's those are pretty good odds uh, because aside from that, I do make a pretty good profit um, on all the other ones, okay? So keep that in mind. But if you're sending it this way, over $10, you definitely want that tracking number because if you sell a coin for 15, 25, 40 bucks and you don't cover yourself with any tracking information, um, you'll be more inclined to get burned because we're talking about higher dollar items, okay? Not substantial, but if you get like four or five uh, claims in a 30 day period, those can be kind of backbreaking, especially when you're dealing specifically with coins that are valued between like five bucks to about $30. So you don't want to do that. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, let me go ahead and move this guy here, is that I'm going to go ahead and package one item up here. Okay, so we have our coin. Uh, let's go ahead and send out the one in the Mylar film for this one. And what I use these for, okay, and I could use one, I could use two, I even have my pressure sensitive tape on hand for this exercise is that I will use one and then what I'll simply do is fold it in half okay and then you guys will begin to see exactly how this all shapes up so I will open it up and the, what I like about index cards is that it's a thicker stock okay it's like in between um, regular sheets of paper and card stock so it's got enough rigidity to keep it safe. In addition, when you have a coin inside the three by five card, you can't really see through it, even with stronger light. So you don't know that it's a collectible coin in there, which is cool. And you can, if you're feeling like you need to be a little bit safer, you can double up. Keep in mind, it adds a little bit to the weight. So what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of my tape. I'm just getting started this morning. I had like two cups of coffee already. And then I'll tape in the three sides right here. Pretty easy, easy stuff. And people appreciate 
the extra level of protection of the coin, even if it's only like a two or three dollar coin. So I have it in there. The coin is indeed in there. And then what we're also gonna do is take, let's say you have the invoice sheet that you printed out with the customer information and what they bought. You could print it off PayPal, uh, but you don't need to ship it through PayPal. So what I'll do is I'll generally fold it in half with the information on the inside and I'll take the coin and I'll stick it like right in the middle, right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Stick it right in there and I'll do a trifold like so. All right, and you can either staple this end here or put a piece of tape. I usually like to use tape because it's flat. That's the invoice with the coin on the inside. It's got a little bit of give. This can go through the sorting machine through the postal facility. You'll go ahead and put the item into the envelope. It's always better to have the security envelopes with a little pattern on the inside. Do a little licky lick. Or if you don't want to do that, uh, like Seinfeld, <laughs> you don't want you want the you don't want the glue poisoning. Then just use a, a wet sponge if you have a lot of them to go through. So from there, you know, you go ahead and uh, write out the information, you know, the to and from address, put a stamp on there, and that one, ladies and gentlemen, is good to go. All right, so the next one, let's go ahead and package it up here. Again, we're gonna keep the same method, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and take this coin, we're gonna go ahead and fold this card here, and we're actually, for this one, we're gonna go ahead and double up the index cards. So that way we have two. The more you use, the more rigid it gets. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and insert said coin in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and tape up the three, the three sides, okay? Pretty easy. You guys will get this down. Again, taking a look at all the materials used for this, and keep in mind, this is for low dollar coins, all right? 80 under $10, this is a snap for. There you go. All right, uh, same thing, same thing, it doesn't change. You'll take your invoice, you'll fold it in half with the information on the inside. You'll seat the coin on the inside sheet like so. Okay, and then do a quick little trifold like so. Can be easier. All right, and then we'll apply a piece of tape to keep it sealed. Insert it into the bubble mailer as such. Usually it'll have an adhesive strip. Fold that in. Fold it. Now, keeping in mind, this is what they call craft, so it's made out of paper, okay? There is also a, um, uh, God, what do you call it? It's kind of like a pot, plasticky material. It's really strong, uh, but you could also use that one as well, but they are a, a little bit more expensive, so keep that in mind when you're going to ship your items that, depending on which one that you do choose, they do both have the bubble insulator on the inside, and this is always handy for coins. They're a little bit more expensive, and these are a little bit more discreet. So the one thing you wanna keep in mind with the craft envelopes, when these get wet, they fall apart, all right? So the, I keep both the Mylar and the craft envelopes on hand, and depending on the region where I send these, I will use one over the other, okay? If, these are, if this coin is going to Florida, for example, in the middle, of summer, I am not going to use a craft envelope, okay? With 100% humidity that they have down there, those will eventually take its toll on these envelopes. But you know, you'll go ahead and seal a piece of tape here. You'll go ahead and if you're gonna write down the information, you just do it the same way. Uh, go on stamps.com, print out a small little label right there, or you could put on three Forever stamps, uh, I figure just going on stamps.com is the best way to do it. If you're gonna do the PayPal thing, okay, you're gonna print out a sheet just big enough 
to fit here. And then you'll encapsulate all four sides with a piece of tape, fold it over on all four sides. And it'll give it that extra amount of protection. And I like to do one piece of tape right down the middle and then fold it over on both sides. All right, so that's gonna be your next presentation. Um, ideally, okay, the less amount of money that you spend for your shipping is going to play a huge difference. When you're selling coins under $10, you can't go and spend $2, $3 for shipping. And then you have the PayPal fee. And then you have the eBay fee. You're gonna end up making probably 45 cents to 60 cents off of those type of transactions and they don't make any sense. It's way too much work than it's worth. So I hope you guys found a little bit of uh, kind of like, um, uh, I don't know, good best practices uh, with my shipping methods. Again, it's clear, it's concise, it's cheap. Again, you have your printer paper, okay? You have index cards. They're the best. Uh, you don't need to get too thick on those. Um, you want these to be sortable, obviously. Um, so, you know, uh, with that being said, what else is there to talk about? Well, if you made it through 21 minutes of just a shipping video, congratulations. Your efforts might just pay off. I am going to be giving away two copies of the United States 2020 Red Book by Whitman Publishing. Thank you very much. So all you have to do is uh, type down below, I found this video helpful. And that's all you need to say. And then you will be entered into a randomization in which I will give away two copies of the 2020 Spiral Bound Whitman book uh, a week from today. All right, so next Thursday, which is going to be the 20th, I will be doing the randomizer to give away two of these books. And all you have to do down below in the comment section, because I'm going to use the, uh, the random comment picker tool, is go ahead and type in, I found this video helpful. Okay, and that's it. That's all I got for you guys. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this one. Uh, it's, you know, not the most stimulating or exciting video. But you're going to come to find out if you're the type of guy or gal that ships out 25, 50 coins, Hey, congratulations. I probably just made you about another $25 to $50 for the month, uh, all by following these best practices. And because of that, you may just win this book. I'm giving away two of them. All right. So I want to thank you guys for joining in. As always, like, share, subscribe to my content. You have no idea how appreciative I am of all of the new guests that come in and actually, you know, have a few takeaways from my videos. Hopefully they were helpful. Um, and as always, Coinaholics, we are discovering together, as always, uh, every step of the way. I'm always learning. You're always learning. Okay? It never ends till our very last day. So I want to thank you guys. Enjoy the hobby. And I will see you next time.